Hey guys, so today I wanted to talk to you a little bit about the fallen angels and I wanted to show you guys a parallel between the spiritual realm and the physical realm because it's very rare uh, that we have a scenario where we get to see both sides. However, this is exactly the case with the first book of Enoch in Leviticus 16. All right, there are three books of Enoch. Only the first one, the Ethiopian edition, it would also be called, is Noah's great-grandfather. Okay, the other ones are the bad Enoch. So, I would not suggest reading those. And the way you can tell is the first verse starts like this. The words of the blessing of Enoch, wherewith he blessed the elect and righteous, who will be living in the day of tribulation, when all the wicked and godless are to be removed. All right, that's the good Enoch. So as long as you have that one, you're good to go. All right, so now let's go down to chapter 6, and we will dive right into this lesson. So I'm going to read to a certain point. We're going to cover a few things, and then I'm going to go over to the King James and read out of Leviticus and show you guys a parallel, which when I saw it, uh, I was my mind was blown. I was taken aback because it's very rare that you get to see um, a parallel between the spiritual and the physical and you'll know what I mean exactly after I uh, bring you through this lesson so let's get started and it came to pass when the children of men had multiplied that in those days were born unto them beautiful comely daughters and the angels of the children of heaven saw and lusted after them and said to one another come let us choose wives from among the children of men, and beget us children. And Semjaza, who was the leader, said unto them, I fear ye will not indeed agree to do this deed, and I alone will have to pay the penalty of a great sin. And they all answered him, and said, Let us swear an oath, and all bind ourselves by mutual imprecations, not to abandon this plan, but to do this thing. Then swear they all together, and bound themselves by mutual imprecations upon it. And they were in all two hundred, who descended in the days of Jared on the summit of Mount Hermon. And they called it Mount Hermon, because they had sworn and bound themselves by mutual imprecations upon it. And these are the names of their leaders. Semlazaz, their leader. Arakoba, Ramiel, Kolkabla, Tamilal, Ramalal, Danel, Ezekiel, Barakajal, Esiel, Aramos, Bartaral, Ananel, Zakiel, Samsapiel, Setarel, Torel, Jomjael, Sariel. These are their chiefs of tens. Sorry about the pronunciations if I missed any. Um, those are pretty tricky names. And all the others together with them took unto themselves wives, and each chose for himself one, and they began to go in unto them and defile themselves with them. They taught them charms and enchantments and the cutting of roots and made them acquainted with plants. And they became pregnant, and they bare great giants, whose height was 3,000 L's. I did a video on 3,000 L's. That's almost a mile. I'm not even kidding. You can check it out. Who consumed all the acquisitions of men, 
And when men could no longer sustain them, the giants turned against them and devoured mankind. And they began to sin against birds and beasts and reptiles and fish and to devour one another's flesh and to drink the blood. Then the earth laid accusation against the lawless ones. And Azazel taught men to make swords and knives and shields and breastplates, and made known to them the metals of the earth and the art of working them, and bracelets and ornaments and the use of antimony and the beautifying of the eyelids, and all kinds of costly stones, and all coloring tinctures. And there arose much godlessness, and they committed fornication, and they were led astray, and became corrupt in all their ways. Samjaza taught enchantments and root cuttings. Amareos, the resolving of enchantments. Barakajal taught astrology. Kokobal, the constellations, Ezekiel, the knowledge of the clouds, Arachiel, the signs of the earth, Shamsiel, the signs of the sun, and Seriel, the course of the moon. And as men perished, they cried, and their cry went up to heaven. And then Michael Uriel, Raphael, and Gabriel looked down from heaven and saw much blood being shed upon the earth, and all the lawlessness being wrought upon the earth. And they said one to another, The earth made without inhabitant cries, the voice of their crying up to the gates of heaven. And now to you, the holy ones of heaven, the souls of men make their suit, saying, Bring our cause before the Most High. And they said to the Lord of ages, Lord of lords, God of gods, King of kings, and God of ages, the throne of thy glory standeth unto all generations of the ages, and thy name holy and glorious and blessed unto all the ages. Thou hast made all things, and power over all things hast thou. And all things are naked and open in thy sight, and thou seest all things, and nothing can hide itself from thee. Thou seest what Azazel hath done, who hath taught all unrighteousness on the earth, and revealed the eternal secrets which were preserved in heaven, which men were striving to learn. And Semjaza, to whom thou hast given authority to bear rule over his associates, and they have gone to the daughters of men upon the earth, and have slept with the women, and have defiled themselves, and revealed to them all kinds of sins. And the women have borne giants, and the whole earth has thereby been filled with blood and unrighteousness. And now behold, the souls of those who have died are crying and making their suit to the gates of heaven, and their lamentations have ascended and cannot cease because of the lawless deeds which are wrought on the earth. And thou knowest all things before they come to pass, and thou seest these things, and thou dost suffer them, and thou dost not say to us what we are to do to them in regard to these. Then said the Most High, the Holy and Great One spake, and sent Uriel, to the son of Lamech, and said to him, Go to Noah, and tell him in my name, Hide thyself, and reveal to him the end that is approaching, that the whole earth will be destroyed, and a deluge is about to come upon the whole earth, and will destroy all that is on it, and now instruct him that he may escape and his seed may be preserved for all generations of the world. And again the Lord said to Raphael, Bind Azazel hand and foot, and cast him into the darkness, and make an opening in the desert, which is in Dudael, and cast him therein, and place upon him rough and jagged rocks, and cover him with darkness, 
and let him abide there forever, and cover his face so that he may not see the light. And on the day of the great judgment he shall be cast into the fire, and heal the earth which the angels have corrupted, and proclaim the healing of the earth that they may heal the plague, and that all the children of men may not perish through all the secret things that the watchers have disclosed and taught their sons. And the whole earth has been corrupted through the works that were taught by Azazel. To him ascribe all sin. And to Gabriel said the Lord, Proceed against the bastards and the reprobates, and against the children of fornication, and destroy the children of fornication, the children of the watchers from amongst the men, and cause them to go forth. Send them one against the other, that they may destroy each other in battle. For length of days they shall not have, and no request for that i.e. their fathers make of thee shall be granted unto their fathers on their behalf. For they hope to live an eternal life, and that each one of them will live five hundred years. And the Lord said unto Michael, Go bind Semjaza and his associates who have united themselves with women, so as to have defiled themselves, with them and all their uncleanness. And when their sons have slain one another, and they have seen the destruction of their beloved ones, bind them fast for seventy generations in the valleys of the earth, till the day of their judgment and of their consummation, till the judgment that is forever and ever is consummated. In those days they shall be led off to the abyss of fire, and to the torment and the prison in which they shall be confined forever. And whosoever shall be condemned and destroyed will from thenceforth be bound together with them to the end of all generations. All right, I'm going to stop right here because we've read everything I needed to read. So I'm just going to come back here, and we're going to focus on Azazel, okay? Because he was ascribed all sin, see? To him ascribe all sin. So Azazel is the scapegoat. This is where this term comes in, all right? So while this was going on in the spiritual realm, this is what was going on in the physical realm. This is Leviticus 16, and we will start at 20. And when he hath made an end of reconciling the holy place and the tabernacle of the congregations and the altar, he shall bring the live goat, and Aaron shall lay both his hands upon the head of the live goat, and confess over him all the iniquities of the children of Israel and all their transgressions in all their sins, putting them upon the head of the goat, and shall send him away by the hand of a fit man into the wilderness. And the goat shall bear upon him all their iniquities unto the land not inhabited, and he shall let go of the goat in the wilderness. And Aaron shall come into the tabernacle of the congregation, and shall put off the linen garments which he put on when he went into the holy place, and shall leave them there, and he shall wash his flesh with the water in the holy place, and put on his garments and come forth, and offer his burnt offering and the burnt offering of the people, and make an atonement for himself and for the people. And the fat of the sin offering shall he burn upon the altar, and he that let go the goat for the scapegoat shall wash his clothes and bathe his flesh in water and afterward come into the camp and the bullock for the sin offering and the goat for the sin offering whose blood was brought in to make atonement in the holy place shall one carry forth without the camp and they shall burn in the fire their skins and their flesh and their dung and he that burneth them shall wash his clothes and bathe his flesh in water, and afterward he shall come into the camp. So you can see 
that in the spiritual realm, they were binding Azazel and throwing him in to the darkness. See right here. Bind Azazel hand and foot and cast him into the darkness and make an opening in the desert, which is in Dudael, and cast him therein and place upon him rough and jagged rocks and cover him with darkness and let him abide there forever and ever. Cover his face so he must so he may not see the light. So you can see here that Azazel was ascribed all the sin. He was the scapegoat. And on the physical realm here on earth, they were confessing all the iniquities of the children of Israel and all the transgressions and all their sins and putting them on the head of the goat and sending him away into the wilderness. So he is the scapegoat. So this is what was happening in the physical realm. So I just wanted to come on here and show you guys this because I think it's absolutely awesome and mind-blowing because you can see what was going on in the spirit and then you can see how it manifested here in the physical. And this is how this whole realm works. Things first happen in the spirit and then they manifest in the physical. I hope that you guys learned something on this. Um, I've been wanting to share this for a while, but I've just had other things to share that really took were more important. Um, so I'm glad I finally got a chance to put this video together. So I hope it edifies you. I hope that it gives you a little insight into the inner workings of God's creation and gives you a little bit more knowledge about how the spiritual realm works and affects and manifests in the physical realm. So I hope you enjoyed it. Till next time, guys, take care.